thank you for the introduction and thank you everyone for attending. It is my pleasure, first of all, to introduce you to the panelists, a little more detail than just the names. So, Shahid Nadeem Sahab, he is a recipient of the Pakistan Pride of Performance Award. Uh, Shahid Sahab is, a, is Pakistan's leading playwright and director as well. He is currently the executive director of Ajoka Theatre and formerly the professor and head of film and television program at the Institute of Art and Culture, Lahore. Shahid Saab has also been, has a long standing association with PTV once upon a time. Uh, he's uh, been a producer, a general manager, held directorial and directorship posts. So um, he's been uh, associated with PTV as a producer, general manager, director. He's the writer of the critically hit movie uh, Manto and several popular dramas like Janjal Pura, Neele Haat, Zard Dupair, Uran Airport. So the esteemed Shahid Nadeem Saab. Then, thank you. then we have Hamad Chaudhary uh, coming through with us uh, on the video link. He's in Toronto. Hamad heads HKC Entertainment. Uh, that's a prominent film distribution and uh, a production company. Uh, he's a distributor of films from Disney, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Sony Pictures, and Lionsgate in Pakistan. Hamad Saab has a love for cinema, and this is something that I can personally attest to. And he carries with him a 60-year uh, leg fa family legacy of being in the film business. So another veteran. Then we have the newer generation, Varda Aziz. Uh, Varda is multi-talented. She's a stylist, a model, sometimes an actor, who is very picky and choosy about her roles. So Varda has performed at Napa International Film Festival and relevant to the context of the panel, she has performed the role of Zainab in Miss Marvel. And uh, Asfan Yar, who's joining us via video link. Asfan Yar is a barrister in the UK who found his love for the performing arts when he was in Karachi. So Asfan acted, directed, adapted independent theatre shows under the banner of Gaslight Company. Also, like Varda, he has played the role of Awares in Miss Marvel. And finally, the representation of the youth from Beacon House. We have Mishma Vasti, a media student from BCP Johar Town, who aspires to revolutionize the media industry in Pakistan. So all the power to you then. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, Guardians of the Future. <laughs> That's the title of this uh, event at SOT. It sounds like a really cool superhero movie, doesn't it? <laughs> well, superheroes, they're almost everywhere. Cinemas, television, mobile devices right now. So let me tell you, the 10-year-old me, when who saw these movie, the superheroes in comic books once upon a time doing all, their, all of their heroics once upon a time, would have been very happy. But the 40-year-old me right now is perhaps happier than my 10-year-old self. You see, there's this very popular quote from Spider-Man. I mean, it's been done time and again, but it's about a great power that carries greater responsibilities. So see, when my younger self didn't realize the depth of that statement, when I think about this today and recollect the real world issue these superheroes tackled in the pages of the comics, what they did as individuals perhaps outweighed the cosmic world-ending catastrophes that they battled against. So just think about it for a second, just one second. Just strip away all of their powers, and who are these people? What makes them who they are? What issues are they addressing? How real are those issues? For, zo for those who do not know, Miss Marvel is the story about a high school-going young girl who's perhaps, like me, a comic book nerd and who's into comic books and heroes, specifically. So what sets her apart? Is that she's a Muslim, and that she becomes to, belongs to a Pakistani immigrant family. So there's racial and religious inclusivity that she's addressing. The representation of culture and youth. There's a lot of responsibility on the shoulders of that one particular show, which I'm sure our panelists are going to bring to light during our conversation. So um, 
we'll start with the session with Shahid Nadeem Saab. And uh, Shahid Saab, out of everything that we just, I just talked about in that moment, do we really need superheroes? And relevant to that, what are your thoughts on the projection of heroism through arts and culture, especially in Pakistan's context? First, a point of uh, clarification. I'll quote uh, one of the superheroes of Bollywood, Shah Rukh Khan, in his uh, famous film, My Name is Khan. He says, my name is Khan and I am not a terrorist. I would say, my name is Shahid Nadeem and I am not a Khan, unfortunately. <laughs> right, now, um, Coming to the question, uh, do we need superheroes? First, uh, I would say that the question should be, do we need heroes? Yes, we do. Uh, we do need heroes because our mundane, routine, ordinary life is not as dramatic and as conclusive as a story of a hero is. So we look forward to role models we look forward for hope. We look, look forward for the victory of uh, good over evil. So for that purpose, I think heroes are needed. Heroes in the movies or as uh, my own field, uh, theater. We do need, we project heroes. And uh, we have so many, I have written plays on Malala Yusuf Zai. I have written play on Bhagat Singh and so many other heroes. So heroes, they, projects values, they give you hope, they give you um, uh, power, at least um, through relating to the heroes. Um, and art and culture uh, is very important. It is not just a, a source of entertainment, but it also has to give you some awareness and some kind of uh, uh, understanding of the issues of your society. But when it comes to superheroes, I wonder. Superheroes are very entertaining, very exciting, and uh, you get some understanding of uh, human values and relationships. Like in Miss Marvel, we see the problems relating to ethnic minorities, blacks, or uh, gender issues in uh, American context. Uh, but when it comes to superheroism, we somehow, they are not related to our realities. They are people who have superpowers, either from another planet or through some kind of uh, genetic uh, uh, mess up. Uh, they become uh, weird kind of characters who have these powers which they have to hide. So although it's sometimes it's very exciting and you get involved in that universe which they have created through comics and movies and not even uh, theater. Or even in theater halls, you see Spider-Man um, flying uh, over you. So, but superheroes, firstly, they are not directly related, so they don't have, you can't have a role model in, in a Superman. You can't start jumping or flying because Superman is flying. And secondly, they are culturally and politically relate, um, uh, biased. So they are heroes from the West, from, the, from Hollywood, from America. So whatever they project, whatever values they project, whatever uh, opponents they defeat, it has a political or cultural impact. So whenever we relate to them, we relate to them as superheroes of a superpower. So I think uh, as far as superheroes uh, are concerned, I have my reservations because they're all, they, have, they carry a baggage. Let me pass this question along to Varda at the time. Varda, please take over. So how universal is the Pakistani story? Just to repeat myself. And why does the world need to hear it? Okay, I wasn't prepared for this, but um, I mean, I've, I've, I'll come from a point where every time we see superheroes, they're always just Hello. white. Hello. And I feel just as we have portrayed it, every time we this see, we have a very skewed uh, perception uh, yeah. Yeah. of Pakistanis, right? Um, I'm, I'll give a very small example about the fact that oh. when I was on set, um, I there were times when, I mean, you know, every time you see Pakistanis portrayed in the media, uh, 
you would see a person wearing a topi with kanchal in his eyes, with a tasbi in his hand, and you'll just like walk in and he'll say, Adab. So, <laughs> and nobody does that. Um, or you will see how a girl would be sh shown in a hijab, or and you will feel that she's probably being oppressed. I mean, you know, as hijab being used as a tool of oppression also. Um, but then when it comes to Miss Marvel portraying Pakistanis or South Asians, I would say, um, I mean, all of you who've watched Miss Marvel, no there's a character of her best friend, Nakia, who's playing a hijabi. And when you look at it, it's not like something that is holding her back. It's hijab is something that she's doing because she wants to do it. You know, she's, she's a feminist. She's wearing, she's, you know, very modern and everything. But it's not something that's holding her back from something that she wants to do. Um, and I feel why it's so important to tell this either story is because our portrayal here in the West, well, it's, it's completely different. People don't know what Pakistanis are like. Everybody's wearing a topi or which is actually not true. Um, when I was on set, um, I had some conversations with like the costume designer where I would, yes, sure. you know, just like, um, they would come to me and they were like, oh, you know, when you have some time, can you walk around and set? Because I'm also a stylist. Um, and tell us if somebody's not looking Pakistani. And I could tell, I mean, how, just how every white person is not American. That's exactly how not every brown person is no, 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 um, no. Indian or Pakistani. Like, like everybody's different and we can't tell the difference. But as a Pakistani, you can. And I could spot the people who were looking Indian. Um, and I feel like no matter how small, um, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that I could pitch in whatever knowledge I have <laughs> to people out there or just to educate them in some way or the other to, to you know, to put Pakistan in a light where it, we can just be perceived better and positively. You just uh, hit on a point there about uh, uh, pointing things mm -hmm. out set, right? Yes. Yeah, can you shed a little light on that? I mean, uh, as in just like about Pakistani Indians and everything? Yeah, because I mean, there were, uh, this is one of those few projects that had Pakis proper Pakistani talent involved. Yeah, yeah. Right. And you were working with an international team at that mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. So there's that overlap. There's another responsibility that you also get of educating yeah. everyone. Yeah. I mean, Shamin did that a lot and you guys did that. So a yes, lot. the yeah. research was very thorough. Um, to a point where, the, you know, about, uh, you know, there were like small nuances everywhere where you could see, ki, um, I don't know if people noticed it, there's a scene where she's going, Eid ke when she's getting ready and her mom's putting kajal in her eyes, which is just probably seen as, oh, she's putting makeup, when, when, when you or Pakistani looks at it, you know that she's putting it because on wo nahi chate ke unko nazar lage. And when I was on set, there are like small the answers that I picked up and I would tell the cast and crew and be like, this is exactly why it's happening. There were people on set who were saying, Bismillah, mashallah. And, and I was educating them with like what it means and like teaching them Urdu, um, which, and, and I think it's because of that where people now know who Pakistanis are. Because I mean, I don't, you know, Marvel is the biggest franchise in the world where um, to, to have their own superhero being a Pakistani and a Muslim to just be out there is a huge deal. And it's not because that Kamala is the only, you know, she can't represent the entire South Asian com community. But even if I feel like she's, with jitne bhi chote se bhi ek agar area ko cater kari hai, and I feel, you know, she's, the, it's made the impact that it was supposed to make. Let's go to Mishma and then I'll go to Asfan again. Aswant, I hope your voice is done, it's clear right now. It's huh? The technical things have been uh, resolved. Mishma, uh, tell me, um, you've seen the show, right? Mike so as a layman and as a media student, to what extent do you feel that Miss Marvel truly represented South Asian culture or rather there's a fantastical element, of, I mean, there's a little bit of a romanticism also involved. It's not everything is 100%. Mm -hmm. So rather the idealized version of this region's culture, what do you feel? 
So in my opinion, um, every film or every series, not everyone can relate to it. And being a Pakistani teenager, and if I relate myself to Kamala Khan, she has different problems. <laughs> I, being in Pakistan, have different pro problems. So, like, the season starts with this AvengerCon thing, and um, at that point, I did realize that I can relate to Kamala, as um, she was in front of her parents and saying, please let me go, <laughs> and all of this. And I can see myself in that kind of situation as well, that if there's this fest or concert or something, I'm in front of my parents, I'm saying that, please let me go. And my parents will straight away say, no, you can't go. <laughs> so at some point, yes, I do relate to that, but I think not every single girl or every single teenager will relate to it as um, there's this cultural differences in here. And um, I think being an A-level student, I have this thing, I might be much more open to concerts and all. But people who are doing metric or intermediate, they're, they're not into that kind of culture. So at some point, yes, I do relate to the South Asian culture uh, with Kamala Khan, but a little bit, not 100%. So, yeah, I, I think it. Back to Shahid Sahib. Shahid Sahib, you said something really interesting. You said that heroes had a political and cultural impact and superheroes were representing not just a race or skin color or inclusivity, it was um, uh, about, uh, they were representing a country and a country's mindset. You said that the heroes that you saw, Superman, whatnot, everyone, they're, they're representing, you said something about politics and cultural impact of those superheroes. Can you elaborate on that? Sorry, I didn't get your question. Uh, in, the, in your last answer about projecting the he projection of heroism through arts and culture. Hello? Uh, so in the, in the last question, that, the first question that you had, you said that uh, you brought on a point about the projection of heroism through arts and culture, and you hit on two points. About superheroes representing a specific uh, country, a specific race, and there's also that political and cultural impact, political impact as well. Could you uh, elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, you see, um, heroes or villains, they have a cultural, political, even uh, temporal uh, significance. So like world war or um, recession in America or uh, cold war with Russia or their present um, uh, uh, issues which confront West, especially the US. So this is all in that uh, context, and it has cultural and uh, social impact also. And a certain class from Pakistan, uh, middle and upper middle classes, who are more familiar with the Western culture and Western, uh, especially Western popular culture, they can associate uh, with uh, these superheroes or heroes as projected uh, in the movies. Uh, um, but um, they still, this is something subservient and it has political impact because usually the villains are either brown or black or Russian or German or Muslim, Arabs, and uh, heroes are almost always, superheroes uh, included, always white and Caucasian and American with the American accent as well. So, uh, so that has uh, psychological and social and political impact on the rest of the world. And that's how the U.S. is dominating the world through cultural and through entertainment and through fiction and also through their economic and political and military power. So I think that uh, we should, it doesn't mean that we should boycott YouTube or we should boycott um, Marvel or Disney. It just means that we should be aware that we are not totally uh, taken in by these uh, uh, characters and beautifully 
and very powerfully produced uh, products, we should be careful and you sh we should see it in its proper context. And in due course, we might be able to develop our own heroes and then our own superheroes. So although, I mean, it will take some time, but at least the awareness should be there. <laughs> so, uh, Aswan, um, let me put the question that I put to Hamad towards you. Would you call Ms. Marvel mm -hmm. a unifying force in South Asian culture? Uh, I definitely think so. I mean, I think that after its release, uh, it has sort of shown itself across all sorts of borders because, I mean, like any kind of story, I, all, I mean, I also want to address your previous question in this as well. Like any kind of story, I feel like the Pakistani story is quite universal. And it's as universal as any story. I mean, people tell stories because on a basic level, other people can relate to them. I mean, it's across all art forms. I mean, I suppose film, TV, plays, books. On a basic level, whatever the characters are going through, I think that everyone at some level can relate to them in some way, if not that specific situation. And I think Miss Marvel does a good job in showing that. I mean, even from wherever you're from, I think it universally is a story about growing up. It's a story that's a coming of age story, a child in a school who's different. Maybe she's not different in the way that we felt different, but she's different nonetheless. And she can relate and everyone can relate to that on some sort of level. And I think that's why whether you're from Pakistan or whether you're from uh, India, Bangladesh, or any sort of other country, you've at some point felt that way in school, right? And I think that that's what it does so well, is that it sort of resonates with all sorts of kids. And yeah, I think that it is sort of in doing that, it sort of unified people. It sort of showed them that in terms of Pakistani artists and culture, it's nothing to be afraid of. I think that foreign stories, stories from other countries are just as powerful, if not more, than the stories from your home country. And I think that Ms. Marvel does a really good job in showing that. Okay, um, that's a really good point. In fact, uh, that brings me to a question that I would like to ask all three of you, uh, Aswan, uh, Varda, and Mishma as well, because you're the newer generation in comparison to Shai and me. Well, it's just sort of like it's a ladder going down and up. So, um, and you'd be better to uh, distinguish that impact. So, can you distinguish the impact that Ms. Marvel had on Pakistani American youth and the Pakistani youth? Because both of you have exposure to both of these regions. So, Aswan, let's start with you again, because you've been silent for so long. Huh. Uh, um, that's a good question, actually, on Pakistani American youth and Pakistani youth over here. I mean, I think that in terms of uh, American diaspora, I think that it has, of course, it applies directly to Pakistani American youth. And there is a whole sort of generation, not just in America, but Pakistanis who have grown up overseas, whose parents migrated. I think that it, of course, applies directly to them because that is the situation of Kamala Khan. But I think Pakistanis at home can also, on some level, relate to it. Of course, not all Pakistanis because it does represent or it does originate from sort of a particular uh, region of Pakistani youths over here. Uh, but I think in terms of, again, as I said, in terms of Feel, growing up in school, going to school, whether it was in America or whether anywhere in the world or back home in Pakistan, I think everyone sort of dealt with those same uh, struggles on a basic level. And I think whether you're in America and you're in Pakistan, I think that is uh, universally the same. But of course, in terms of uh, your day-to-day -day activities and your day-to-day sort of routine, I think, in being in America and being in Pakistan does differ. But I, I mean, of course, I'm not in a position to speak of uh, Pakistani American youths uh, because I grew up my entire life in Pakistan. Uh, but I think it is actually surprisingly with 
lot more similar than people could imagine. Yeah. Varda, your end. So, since we're talking about youth, like we all know, we live in a digital world where. Well, especially the youth or the kids, they look up to superheroes so much. I know my two-year-old nephew just wears Captain Marvel and Marvel Crocs or T-shirts or whatever. It's just before they even start to speak, there are like things that they pick up from superheroes and they look up to them in some way or the other. Um, with, and then I also understand not everybody is born into the same circumstances, right? Like not everybody comes from a privileged background. Um, so just coming from a Muslim com community or you're coming from a South Asian community, um, I feel it shouldn't, your, your this skin color or where you come from should not, it's not something that should hold you back from what you want to do in life. Um, and as the youth, I, like I said, like it's it not um, influenced on social uh, movies say a superhero say. So when you, and also because I know I, a lot of my friends who are Pakistanis living abroad, jitna um, hote, those people are actually more closer to their roots than actual Pakistanis are. Um, and I'm speaking from experience. Um, because we don't see role mod models like that, so we're like, oh, we want to be that Western person. Um, because that's what we're looking up to. What Miss Marvel has done, I don't know how big, but I feel, oh, it has made a platform for just people to connect on a certain level where they can relate to a superhero being brown. You know, it, not everybody is going to be able to relate to that. Magar chai wo Pakistani American ho who doesn't want to tell people that they are Pakistanis because they will be looked down upon or they want to act cool and act all westernized regardless of being Pakistani because they're not comfortable in their own skin. But I know that now maybe they can just, you know, just shrug their shoulder off and be cool about it. So, yeah. And Ms. Ma, now? Uh, for me, I think uh, Pakistanis, uh, teen Pakistanis and teen American Pakistanis, they have this point that for so many years, the South Asian culture is only shown and the Indians are there. No Pakistanis have been ever on TV or something like that. So the point where we as living in Pakistan can relate to that and people in America or uh, in the world can relate that we are finally on the big screen now as Pakistanis is the biggest point for me it's that. Mishma, you said the big screen and Hamad is on the big screen. <laughs> Hopefully. So, Hamad, yeah, hi. <laughs> so, just say something. Can we hear you? Oh, man. <laughs> well, Hamad was responsible for bringing Miss Marvel to Pakistani cinemas. Um, it was a rare one off thing that happened because you don't see Marvel series being shown in cinemas. That was a Pakistani exclusive event. And the only reason why he did that was to sort of like showcase that Pakistan, look, Marvel is taking a big step by bringing a Pakistani origin Muslim superhero into the Marvel fold. And that has to be given its due respect in Pakistan. So, Hamad, a small round of applause for you. <laughs> But uh, coming back to this, we have, uh, let us move on. Um, so, Shahid Sahib, does popularizing culture creates, does that create new stereotypes? Um, well, firstly, um, I would say that uh, Miss Marvel, for example, it does, it's a breakthrough. It's a, it's a major contribution to the inclusion of a huge South Asian American uh, community in the US. And uh, the way the uh, mainstream or majority looks at Muslims or Pakistanis or brown people. 
So I think very sensitively they have um, uh, handled some very tricky subjects and projected a, uh, a very uh, fair and um, likable image of uh, a South Asian Pakistan, uh, Pakistani American family. So, but this is for uh, American Pakistanis because they need recognition, they need inclusion in the American society. But as far as the, the Pakistani side is concerned, I think here we actually, uh, we are on the other side. We are a majority and we treat our minorities not very nicely, I would say. So uh, when it comes to stereotypes, uh, I think the, the Pakistani part uh, of the Miss Marvel story, for example, it uh, breaks certain stereotypes like of the uh, namaz uh, or hijab or uh, very, very strict and rigid uh, society. And it is projected that they have young people who sing, young people who uh, uh, can fight or who can be heroes. Uh, but at the same time, certain issues are handled, uh, I would say, uh, uh, not, uh, they could have been handled better. For example, the very name Kamala. It's a totally alien name for a Muslim or Pakistani society. They have justified it that Kamal uh, and Marvel and perfection it is related. But there is another name, Kamila. Kamila means something similar and it would be more familiar. Similarly, partition, they very, uh, uh, I would say, in passing, um, um, they have stated or they, the message is that partition was a conspiracy by the British, which is not the case. And the communalism and the violence created was not a conspiracy of the British. They contributed, they blundered the British. But you have to see that the South Asian Muslims, Hindus, Sikhs, they behaved atrociously. They behaved like beasts during the partition rights. So that could not be just by a beautiful uh, image of uh, um, uh, um, uh, the migrants or refugees. That doesn't, uh, that is like glossing over the horrible uh, partition um, uh, um, uh, kind of uh, heritage which we have. So I think that could have been handled better. Similarly, I think uh, even in the American context, all Pakistani Americans don't uh, have long beards and um, the mosque is not necessarily center of all their activities. And halal food is not the only concern. And every uh, now and then you see halal mentioned this way or that way. Although it does break certain stereotypes and it is sometimes quite funny. But still, I think the image of Pakistani Americans is also still stereotypical. Shai Saab, uh, let's continue that train of thought. You said that there were a lot of things that could have been handled better. What do you think has been the cause of that? Because you've been uh, associated with the production side as well. You know how stories are developed. Sometimes there are restrictions happening when you set up stories, studio pressure, uh, uh, what they want to promote, what image do they want to, to give to the audience. Sometimes people have to stay away from controversy. What do you think has been the cause of all of these lacks from the production's point of view, from your experience? I think uh, uh, technically speaking, it's a remarkable production, uh, as good as any uh, uh, Western or Hollywood uh, film would be, and it's very interesting. Uh, the story is engaging, but uh, there is a major thing missing that is conflict. So in drama, you can't have a drama without conflict. Here is, I mean, there is contrived conflict. You have this uh, character, uh, Najma, or, uh, played by Nibra Bucha. So she has a justification, she wants to go to her universe. So she has a justification. Similarly, the police in, uh, uh, in uh, Jersey, they have a reason to uh, try to grab these, uh, 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 what they call, uh, reinforced uh, individuals who are causing havoc there. So they have a justification. And um, the, the friends of Kamala, they have their justifications and uh, they make friends. The parents, 
they turn out to be very nice parents and they are just concerned about their daughter but in the end they also are very understanding and very i would say accommodating so but in good drama you need a conflict it doesn't mean that the evil should be totally evil or the good should be uh, like angelic but still uh, in this, uh, unlike some other um, uh, superhero movies in miss marvel there is no real conflict and miss marvel is not doing anything for her people or her community she is just running away either from uh, 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 that character nimra butcher's character or from the police or from the parents so she is just running away but she unlike uh, batman or spider man she is not uh, uh, using her power for the good of the community so i think that as is something as a superhero she is running away but not as a, a representation of uh, all yeah. of these things that we talked she about she is right? a super runner rather <laughs> than a superhero <laughs> <laughs> thank you be good for her to lose some weight ouch <laughs> ouchy anyways so <laughs> coming back to this um Varda, do you think that Miss Marvel creates an avenue for Pakistani actors to get uh, better roles in Hollywood? I'll tell you from my experience. Um, like, I didn't, I, I wasn't expecting to get the gig or whatever. But um, yes, it's just maybe it's a stepping stone for sure. And I'm just super glad. I know Shermin plays a very important part in the fact that um, she was getting castings from India to be. for my character and other characters but because she was just responsible for episode 4 and 5 she made sure that she had to get a pakistani uh person to play that certain role which no matter how small matlab jitna bhi usme cover hua hai whatever i just feel it has to be somebody who takes that stand for you um she could have easily just gotten away with the fact getting somebody living in the us because it would have been easier for them with you know all the processes visa processes yeah shooting ka ya sag aftra ke jo unions ke masle hote hain but she so i feel there has to be somebody to take that stand for you and um it it almost came as a surprise for me so i feel like eventually now because there is so much need for south asian um actors across the world magar um and after that i mean i've had a few meetings and it's people are actually interested in doing crossover projects with pakistani people just because now they've seen that there is so much talent in pakistan um so yeah well thank you um we have some questions from the audience here um i'll start with aswan so aswan yes, uh, yes. we have a question yeah can superheroes be defined as a potential compass of moral indicators um as a potential compass of moral indicators i mean i don't think superheroes can i mean you can uh, define them as potential compass of moral interests more than anyone else i mean i think on the basic level why superhero stories are told is because they are universal i think that superheroes i think any good superhero story that you may have seen in the cinema or on tv or in comic books or in stories they are at the root of it just people and i think that i don't think deriving any sort of moral indication from that is truly helpful because i think that's what makes superhero stories good is that i mean even with miss marvel i think what makes it stand out is the sort of i mean i know shayad nadeem sahab said that there wasn't any conflict in it but i think that the main conflict of kamala khan is sort of growing up it's a sort of deeper internal conflict that she's dealing with and i think that uh that is what really resonates with everybody even if it's not a sort of hand to hand or sort of confrontation conflict like that i think there's a deeper sort of internal conflict of growing up in america as a pakistani which i think is so sort of i mean resonates with audiences worldwide and uh i think that driving moral indication in superheroes isn't too fruitful because i think that superheroes just like anyone else i don't think that 
bigger than people. I think that they are just people and they're dealing with their own indications, even if they're slightly different. So I I don't think so. Huh. So I agree with both of your points. In fact, um, uh, I really like the idea about this character, this origin story that we see in this Marvel. Uh, because this is an origin story of someone who's finding out who she is. Her superpowers have, are slowly manifesting, her actual superpowers at the end of Miss Marvel. So she's in the process of discovery throughout the series, and that's why the series goes into back and forth. And I think it would be a bad idea, like you just said, to put these heavy loaded questions onto these characters, uh, derivative of whatever their moral compasses are. Because characters with the fallibilities, they tend to give the best stories. When, like Shahid Saab said, Kevin characters have conflicts. That is when they should surpass those conflicts and move on to something better when they're telling stories. So yeah, agreed with that. Um, but okay, so I just said on challenges. For Varda, this is a question for you. What are the challenges for Pakistani actors in working with an international cast? I didn't face any issues, um, I, but also I feel it's it's solely because it was the the main story was of a Pakistani superhero, and the show had so many Pakistanis in it. It had, you know, just so I feel like every time I was hanging out with the rest of the cast, they were so curious and so inquisitive to know what's actually happening because unko pata hi nahi tha na ki hamare cultures mein kya kya cheez kaise ho rahi hai of something's happening, why it's happening, so. I, I don't know because I haven't done any other Hollywood project, but for this this project that I worked on, everybody was super welcoming to a fact that they knew that they were actually casted for something um, that they were they didn't know about. Usually, you see Hollywood movies in which they know what the story is going on. They can relate to all of that. But with this, it was more about it was more about Pakistanis and um, just. So we shot, uh, so half of it was shot in the US, in Atlanta, and then the, the Karachi stuff was shot in Thailand. Yeah. And also, I'll make a point about the fact how you said, you know, she's, she, Kamala's running away. What I personally feel is, um, because being a Pakistani immigrant and somebody coming from Pakistan, we see her throughout that she's not comfortable in her own skin. She doesn't, she, she can't make friends, she can't relate to people in her, um, or she can't relate to the cool white people in her school. Um, like I said, that this is one of the things that happens with Pakistani um, kids abroad, but the youth. They relate to and and all they want to be is just they want to be cool. Um, so I feel like the part where you say that she was running away, it was more about like her not being comfortable in her skin. Um, to just accept that she is Pakistani and she is brown and she because she, she did, I feel like she just didn't believe in herself that she could be a superhero or she could be something to save the world. Good answer. And in fact, this is something that I personally would uh, uh, I agree with. I think her. I could just add Sorry. to that. Uh -huh. Who was that? Oh, I, uh, I just wanted to add to that. If we yeah, please, please do, please do, yeah. please do. In terms of running away, I think that if it feels like Kamala is initially running away in the show, I think that is because she is, because she's a young girl faced with this sort of cosmic responsibility. And at that age, if anyone is faced with this, who isn't going to run away? It's a totally natural instinct to feel that way. And I think the arc of the whole show is sort of she's initially sort of wanting to distance herself from it because she's afraid and i think that is what makes it so compelling and throughout the show we sort of see her own that and come back to it so it's sort of a journey in that whole way and i think that i mean yes she is running away because it is scary but then i think we see her sort of come back to it after knowing more and it's sort of a i mean it is a hero story it's a origin story and we see her own it in the end. So I think that is what it completes her arc as a whole. I'm going to add a line from the film where it says it's not yeah. the brown girls from Jersey City who saved the world. <laughs> um, 
I mean, um, I hope there will be a sequel. And because the, uh, this series ends <coughs> with Kamala kind of discovering and trying to uh, uh, sort of understand her powers. So maybe in a sequel she can beat some real bad guys like <laughs> Donald Trump or Ku Klux Klan or something like that. So uh, let some white uh, villains be beaten by Kamala. And that would put I mean, power in a very bad position, in, in by the way. Development. <laughs> Beating so up real I, life people. That's I'm willing to write the script. <laughs> Hamad has left us or I would have told Hamad to get you in touch with the studios. <laughs> so, um, no, I, I agree with that, um, with all of these things. So, okay. This is a good one. And Shahid Sahib, you take a stab at this. The question is this, while we accept Miss Marvel as a superhero, how does one ignore promotion of a nation of vigilantes in society? Because at the end of the day, all heroes are presented, most heroes, well, are presented as vigilantes. They're against the law, they're against uh, um, the, uh, the police and the law and whatnot. They're running their own thing. So, yeah, your take on that. Well, uh, that will be very representative of us Pakistanis because <laughs> we, we are uh, quite good at being uh, vigilantes and taking law in our own hands, be it Karachi or Punjab or wherever. Um, yes, um, I think all superheroes, they have an element of uh, kind of bypassing the law, which is quite uh, interesting and popular with the audience because everyone has some grouse against the law and the system or the status quo. So being um, a little bit of a vigilante is fine, but if they are too far removed from your realities, like Pakistanis, I think we have so many other problems uh, right here, uh, problems relating to fanaticism, law and order, corruption, or uh, politicians uh, making a mess of everything, and um, the state um, kind of uh, imposing itself on uh, society. So, so a hero, uh, a real genuine hero should be rooted in our realities. And uh, if uh, that uh, hero, he or she, is uh, kind of flouting or bypassing uh, the law, that is fine because most of our films in India or Pakistan we have these heroes who are flouting the law, and the latest example is uh, Mola Jatt, <laughs> the legend, who is uh, just Sorry. with the Gandasa, just killing right and left, and the law or uh, establishment doesn't exist in that world. So, I mean, that is the problem with the, uh, us when we go to... Uh, to fiction, to um, uh, cinema house, that then we want to forget the realities, that we want to just go in a land of fiction. But it's up to the fiction writers, the filmmakers, to keep it rooted to uh, or linked to the society so that it has some meaning. And it is not just meaningless fantasy land. Well, I say the problems that you defined in the beginning, no superhero can take care of that in Pakistan, so <laughs> nothing. So, um, Mishma, do shows and movies like Miss Marvel distort the concept of reality for children and adults? Ouch. <laughs> um, so, in my opinion, there's a very thin thread between reality and fantasy. And for teens and children, I think it's very hard to know that that this specific thing is reality and we have to be in reality. And for the ad adults, they sometimes think that, yes, this is what it is <laughs> and we have to stay in the reality. But seasons like Miss Marvel, I think um, being a teenager, I have this um, thing that I know that this is fictional. But if someone, in the age um, group between 
10 to 12 years or lower than that, they might think that yes, we also might have these kind of superpowers in us and they might be doing this and that <laughs> to see that if we actually have those powers. So I think um, for the children, it's hard, but uh, with time, it's um, much more easier to understand between fantasy and reality, but for the adults, we uh, I think we know that we should just enjoy it as a movie or a season, but for the children, it's always hard. So it's the broader questions that work, not the superheroics. Okay. So, um, Aswan, one question yes. and uh, final question, and after that, I'll be wrapping this up. Um, how does superheroes beating up villains work for a society? that wants to promote kinder, less stereotypical male behaviors? That's a good question, actually. I think that in that, I mean, to address that, I kind of like think about how superhero stories and villain stories have sort of progressed over the years. Traditionally, we would see uh, sort of very clear good and bad in terms of the superhero and the villain but i think as stories have sort of developed and progressed in the near in the recent uh past we've sort of seen more complex villains uh villains that aren't necessarily completely evil villains that have different motivations and i think we've seen sort of villain origin stories as well which has created a new form of, I think, interest in the audience where you're watching the story between a superhero and a villain and you're not too certain where you fall because these days the villain stories are equally sort of understandable, equally sort of relatable and you can at some level sort of understand where they're coming from. And I think that that blurring of the line between good and bad has, so, uh, I think, made for more compelling stories, for more interesting stories, and for stories that you sort of think about once you leave the cinema. I mean, if you just take any sort of experience in the recent past, uh, I mean, if I was just to take, I mean, on any other Marvel project, Doctor Strange recently, the main villain in that, which is Wanda, is sort of doing everything that she's doing to be reunited with her children. And I think that that sort of deeper, more developed villain persona and personality is what is being promoted these days. And I think that's a really, really interesting and good development in storytelling. Well, thank you. That's fun. Um, as someone who watches a lot of content, well, I should not use, not use the word content because content is irrelevant in this age, day and age. Everyone makes content. So who sees a lot of serials, a lot of movies, and whose job obligation requires that he analyzes all of these things. I think Ms. Marvel sets up something that is representative of Pakistan, but it Rather than us, it sort of communicates our image better to the worldwide audience. And I think that's a, a, that took its time coming, a long time coming. But finally, that it is here, I hope and pray that in the future, more projects like these utilize the platform that Ms. Powell has given us and create a better projection for Pakistan in the longer term whether it's in Hollywood, whether it's in America, uh, in uh, the UK, film industry, France, whatever, internationally, globally. So that's one step taken. A couple of hundred steps left. So I'd like to thank the panelists over here. Shahid uh, Saab, Aspan. Aman, uh, oh. Before we leave, can yes. I just, sorry, can I just say one thing before we leave? Yeah, yeah. I think that, I mean, uh, just to address Shahid Saab's comment on uh, the Kamala Khan's sort of weight issue. I, I frankly think that in our uh, strive for telling universal stories, I think that it is sort of time to leave behind these traditional roles of actors and actresses. I don't see 
the kind of relevance of any superhero's weight, frankly, in the story of Miss Marvel. And I think that in Pakistani cinema, I mean, as a young actor, I know that in casting agencies and anywhere, I've personally felt that, you know, sort of traditional beauty has been preferred over anyone who, like any male actors, those who gym and sort of anything. And I think other, that has deprived a lot of people in terms of getting roles and pursuing the arts. And eventually those people with that passion sort of leave that behind. So, I mean, in alongside not seeing the relevance of the anyone's weight in Miss Marvel, I feel like Pakistanis have, I mean, I think we're at that point where leaving behind traditional beauty roles in casting actors, because I mean, we're being representative, we're telling universal stories, we're telling everyone's stories and people come in all shapes and sizes. And I think that any appearance related issues, I think in if we're representing stories globally, I think leaving that behind has been a long time coming and hopefully moving forward, we do sort of abandon these traditional sort of elements of casting actors and characters as a whole. Yes, that is, yeah, thank you. Well, that is what is happening with Miss Marvel. It has given us an avenue, a, 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 a sort of a platform for representation. Pakistani talent, even though it was partially there, in Miss Marvel, it has it is about Pakistani talent. So um, I hope we, our actors, get a lot more recognition, a lot more work in Hollywood. Pakistani actors of Pakistani uh, origin also get more work. So we actually see Pakistani actors portraying Pakistani characters, and not the other way around. So thank you, uh, Aswan. Thank you, Varda. Thank you, Shahid Saab, Mishma. And thank you, Hamad, wherever you are. <laughs> so uh, your opinions mean a lot. And thank you, everyone, for attending.